I've been wanting to get more into themes of things that are a little bit creepy, a little bit spooky. So I made this painting and then it dried and it looks awful. Some parts of it are shiny and some parts of it are matte and I am livid. But it's fine. It looked great before. I'll varnish it once it's dry. But I wanted to talk about my process of painting it because I do like it. Or I did like it. Here's my painting process and I'll talk you through it. Okay, so starting out, I decided to do an acrylic base layer before I started going with my oils. So I mixed up this like dark blue color from my sky and I put that all up on the top and then I went in with straight black to fill in this part where the trees are. I'm not really too picky about what these colors are. I just wanna like start with something so I have some color to work on top of when I start putting my oils on. And you can see there also, I added this little green stripe. It's gonna be my nice, Nice, sweet looking UFO beam, beaming up, whatever it is, it's beaming up. Then I put my colors on there. I have titanium white, ultramarine blue, cerulean blue, sap green, Indian yellow, Windsor red deep, ivory black, and quinacridone magenta. And so I start mixing up my sky colors first, and these colors are dark. You can barely tell what they're gonna be. I think. If I were to redo this painting, I would do some of those sky colors a little bit lighter so there's a little more contrast with the clouds, but I really like how much the little UFO stands out once I actually get the full painting done, so, you know. So now I'm taking this dark, it's like a, it's, it's like a super, super dark magenta. It's a magenta that has ultramarine and a little bit of Indian yellow in it and maybe even like a tiny little bit of black. I just kind of sketched where those clouds are gonna be I added a little bit of a lighter magenta, and then I started putting on my dark sky color, and it's a very subtle difference, but I have a super dark blue at the top, and then it moves slowly into a little bit of a lighter blue, as you can see me putting on there. Then I take a big soft brush, and I smooth out all that stuff. It's like my favorite part of oil painting is getting that big soft brush and just like smoothing everything out. Then I just start to clean everything up. I do the brushing again. I darken some of the clouds where I want them to be. I highlight the clouds in little areas I want them to be. And then I get started on my little UFO there. So I'm taking um, mostly blue colors. It's like a very light blue for that highlight and then like a medium blue for the shadowed parts because I want this to really stand out like it's being super lit up by the little lights that I'm gonna put there on the bottom. Oh, and sorry, the light on the video too goes from dark to light depending on where I am casting a shadow. So I, that's something I need to work on in my uh, video process. But here I am putting tiny little lights on there. I've got a bunch of tiny little red lights and little white lights smoothing out around that little UFO. And I've also got, um, I've got a very light yellow color that I'm using for the light that the beam's gonna be coming out of. Now, this is my favorite technique for doing stars. The smaller you can get stars to be, the better they're gonna look. So instead of doing it with a paintbrush, I got a mechanical pencil to a very fine point, And then I just dipped that in white paint and started dotting it around. I highly recommend that tool for doing stars. Then I got started on my beam and this is a little, this is a really interesting way I did that. I started with dark layers. I added on some lines of lighter green and then I would brush them out with my soft brush and it created this really interesting way the light works. Like it looks like there's like different beams or particles of light moving through this beam. It's really cool. I love how it turned out. Like it, the light is swirling around. I also wanted to add a couple little, um, I don't know what else to call them, light anomalies, a little yellow one and like a little red one, like they're also some kind of UFO thing that's partnered with this video. I don't know, I'm such a weirdo about weird spooky stuff like aliens and stuff, so don't, don't ask me too much about it, unless you want me to go on for days about weird, creepy stuff. So then I started doing the trees and the foliage. I started putting like a very, very dark color. It's black mixed with a little bit of green because I wanted it to be so dark, so dark. This painting is very dark overall. And then I started adding a couple highlighted areas where light from the beam is gonna be hitting the trees. It's a very, very bright neon green because I want it to look very unearthly and strange on these trees. So it is like super, super green, so green. 
And then I start to add that there's some like reflective light also that I started adding on like normal green colors by dabbing my paintbrush with that green and then I take that dry brush and I smooth it out and then I go in with some more details. This is the part where I take the most time. I know it looks like I'm rushing because it's sped up 800 times, but I am taking my sweet time with this. I'm doing all these details, whatever pace I want. Here I'm adding more highlights, trying to get some more detail going in there. I really want the most important part of this painting to be the light because the light is like what pulls you in. It's a very fun, dramatic piece. I ended up really liking it until it dried and looked like garbage. I, yeah, it looks great there. And then, I just dunk it in the garbage. That's my process. If you have any questions for me about how I did that, let me know in the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on my spookier painting. Putting little UFOs and aliens and ghosts and Bigfoot and all that weird shit because I'm, one of those people. Sorry to let you down. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.